Mr. Cornsey, you mentioned a minute ago that uh, some states were better than others in their existing regulations of hydraulic fracturing. Um, what can you tell me about what issues you might have found in Utah? Were there issues with Utah's regulations that you found inadequate? And if so, what were those? So as we appreciate the question, Senator Lee, as we worked on this, you know, and we sat down with state regulators, with industry, with environmental organizations, with the general public, you know, what we were looking at is what are the best management practices? So we didn't necessarily take it upon ourselves to sort of say Utah is good or bad or Kansas is good or bad. We tried to look at, you know, where is this leaning? Where is it now? What are the best practices? And so it wasn't necessarily the case that any state was inadequate? No. And if no state was inadequate, then why was it necessary to come up with a national standard, particularly in light of the geology that differs from one state to another? Well, I will tell you that only roughly half of the states that we have oil and gas leases in, uh, that we have oversight responsibility for, have stepped forward and regulated in this area of hydraulic fracturing. Okay, but, but, but of those states, you haven't found any to be inadequate in their regulation? Well, I'm saying we haven't taken upon ourselves to make that kind of judgment. So that, that wasn't the basis, that wasn't the, the approach that we took. But, I, but roughly half the states that we regulate in don't have, have not stepped forward to regulate in this area. Okay. So our, our standards that we've just put forward would be the baseline standards on public land, and so, there otherwise would not be standards on the Okay, so, th so that's a good point. If that's the case, if, if you've got a number of states that don't have any regulations at all, mm -hmm. and you've got other states that do have regulations, none of which are inadequate, why not allow those states that have regulations that you've now acknowledged are adequate to remain in effect rather than being replaced by a national rule? And so that comes to the variance, variance process and how oil and gas has worked So, in terms of regulation. So if, you know, if the state of, the Utah, state of Utah historically has had you know, basic standards for, let's say, you know, disposal of water or basic drilling techniques, those would be laid against the standards that the Bureau of Land Management has put forward for federal lands. And they would say, you know, our regulators would work together in the field and they'd say, which standard is higher, more restrictive, and that standard would apply. So if, so if Utah had exceeded BLM standards in a certain area, we would be following Utah standards on public lands. Will this inevitably extend the period of time that it takes to get regulatory approval, given that the rule contemplates uh, a, a need to either get this approval from BLM as part of the APD process or outside the process separately. Now, in my state, in Utah, it already takes about 200 days to, a, to, to get an APD approved. Uh, do you think it's reasonable to expect uh, BLM field staff to take on this, this added responsibility of approving uh, these fracking permits and, and to not expect additional delays in the process? So we have looked at this, and I believe this is spoken to in the rule, that we expect the additional workload on our end is about four hours per drilling application. So there's, there is additional information that we're going to be looking at. So is there an increase? Yes. Is it significant? We don't see it as such. Do I think that 200 days is a great number? I don't. And so we're working aggressively to see what we can do to bring that down. We were at 300 days a few years ago. I'm proud that we've made this progress. And this online permitting system that I mentioned earlier, I think is really going to help us step forward and hopefully make some, some system changes that will help permitting times across the country. OK. Um, I, I want to get back to the state-by-state the, the state issue we talked about a minute ago. Um, if, if the rule allows for variances, isn't that basically what we were already doing under the process that uh, utilized memoranda of understanding? Uh, and and in, in the, the case of Utah, for example, there was a memorandum of understanding that had just recently been entered into. Um, so in light of that, why not just respect the MOU? Why not just honor the MOU and allow that to stand? So the MOUs are, are very helpful and important, and I, there was, it was mentioned earlier in, in another witness's testimony about what these are. And I'll tell you, we have been reaching out to states sort of since I got involved in the Bureau of Land Management's oil and gas program 
the efficiencies that are possible through these MOUs, making sure that, you know, let's say, for instance, in a big state like yours, that there's one state well, you know, down by Kanab, but we have 100. And vice versa, up in Box Elder County, we've got two and you guys have got 50. You know, we can sort of have resource sharing and workload sharing that can make a big difference. And so that's, that's the point of some of the MOUs, but also we can use those MOUs to codify an understanding of what kind of variances might be allowable between state rules and federal rules. So we've, we've had these conversations. So the MOU you spoke to uh, is partially focused on efficiency of, of working together. But the MOUs we're talking about today in the context of a variance would be more specific to these rules. So because we now have a rule, that's what prompts the conversation and hopefully the updating of that rule or that MOU. Okay, uh, thank you for your, your answers. I, I appreciate your testimony and your, your hard work on this, uh, but my time's expired. I, uh, I, I, I do want to state for the record, I, I've, I've got concerns. Uh, uh, th this appears to me to be something that could well be a solution in search of a problem. I have not heard testimony today indicating a single problem with a single state's regulation of hydraulic fracturing, not a single one. And, and in light of that, I, I, I struggle a lot with the idea that we need a new national regulatory scheme. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Lee. Uh, Senator